precisely. And it's not real, but it's, it's his perspective. So therefore, it becomes his reality. Mm-hmm. You cannot change somebody's reality. What you can do is you can give them information so that they change their perspective. When they change their perspective, then their reality changes. Mm. All right? So. Paradigm shift. Yeah, exactly. So now here's how it works. This is what I'm telling you that, that I've heard time and time again Well, from these people when they renounce. Like when they first walk into the room and see me or, or, or encounter me, wherever, their wall goes right up. I am the enemy. I am inferior to them. And they want to radiate hate towards me. You know, I, I, you know that, that's what makes them a supremacist because I'm inferior. Right. All right. So they're going to be on the offense. And, you know, is what that guy telling me that uh, I'm a criminal and that I'm lazy and my brain is small, so I'm dumb? Um, is that offensive? Of course it's offensive. Am I offended by it? Absolutely not. Most people would be offended by that, yeah. but I'm not offended by it. Not because it's true. The reason why I'm not offended by it is because it's not true. Why should I be offended by a lie? This guy doesn't know me. He only met me five, ten minutes ago. And he's telling me, based on the color of my skin, that I'm dumb and that I'm prone to crime and that I'm lazy. Now, if my parents told me that, I might have some concerns. Because, you know, they brought me into this world. They know me better than anybody else. You know, Daryl, you know, you know, you're you're you know, you're, you're, you're kind of dumb. <laughs> okay, well, maybe I am, all right? But not some guy who just met me 10 minutes ago. Uh, so don't let your emotions get in front of you, all right? They don't know you. So why believe them? Don't be offended by a lie, all right? So what I did was I threw them off their game. Their wall is up. And normally when you tell somebody all this vitriol, they're going to start pushing back. Right? Because, you know, they're not going to put up with that. You know, because they're offended now. Their emotions have got in front of them. These people are used to that. They're used to offending people. That's why they're in the clan. Wow. Right? But, you, you know, you're not used to being offended. <laughs> so they, they are the experts at this. Mm. And so um, don't let them push your buttons. Sit back. Now, here's something that I've learned. As a kid, I told you I traveled a lot. As an adult, I travel a lot, performing or giving lectures around the world. When you combine my childhood travels with my adult travels, to, th- to this date, I've been in a total of 57 different countries on six continents. Wow. I've been exposed to a multitude of cultures, colors of skin, religions, beliefs, you name it. I've seen a lot of them, all right? And when I come back home and I think about the people I've met, the places I've gone, the things I've seen, I conclude one thing. No matter how far I go or how close I go, whether I go right next door to Canada or this side to Mexico or whether I go to the other side of the earth, when I get back home, I conclude one thing. Everybody I've seen, no matter how different, what language they speak, what, who they worship or whatnot, we all are human beings. And as such, we all want the same basic five things. We want to be loved. We want to be respected. We want to be heard. We want to be treated fairly. We want the same things for our family as anybody else wants for their family. As long as we understand that and keep those five core values there and apply them wherever we go, we can navigate any society. Mm. The Klan is just another society to me. All right? They want the same things I want you know, for their family. They want to be heard. They want to be respected. You know, they want to be treated fairly, all this kind of stuff. So if I apply those things, I can get along. All right? we, we, we may not agree on certain things, obviously. I don't respect what they say. I will never respect what they say. Right. But I will respect their right to say it. Because we do have the right to freedom of speech. Right. Right. So I give them that. Um, people want to be heard. I'm allowing him to be heard. He's telling me I'm a criminal and uh, I'm lazy. I'm on welfare and, and uh, my brain is small. I'm allowing him to be heard. Let, you know, let him be heard. So what, what, I, what I'm doing is I'm not pushing back, I'm, I'm, but I'm not kissing his butt either. I'm just you know, giving him that respect. Mm. I'm lowering that wall. 
That wall's coming down. Because normally within 45 seconds, somebody's going to be pushing back on them. What do you think that is about you that makes you able to have the conversation with somebody who's blatantly insulting you and to be able to, to keep that sense of calmness and keep us and maintain a civil conversation and discourse with because i view like racism as a disease it's a disease of the mind and you know we don't you know we can't we can't always fault somebody if they're sick you know there, there's no way in hell this guy has seen as much as i've seen right you know he, he hasn't been to 57 countries you know he hasn't even been to 50 cities you know, he, he hasn't probably <laughs> yeah. hasn't even been 50 miles from where he lives you know, you know he, he lives in a bubble that's a really good point yeah, that's a really so good point. I try to, you know, to understand that um, he's wrong, you know, but I try to bring him what I've seen vicariously and realize he's not had the same exposure that I have. One of my favorite quotes of all time is by Mark Twain, and it's called the travel quote. And Mark Twain said, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry and narrow mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one little corner of the earth all one's lifetime. That is so true. You know, had I grown up here in this country my whole life, would I be doing this work today? Probably not. I'd probably mm. stay as far away from those people as I could. But because I've seen things, I've been around different people. I got along with different people from all over the world. I know it can work. He doesn't know that because he hasn't had that experience. Again, one's perspective is one's reality. You know? Right. Okay, so Real I'm lowering the wall by allowing him to be heard. Get it all out. I'm showing him that respect of listening to him. I'm treating him fairly. You know, it's your turn to talk. Go ahead. You know? And he's insulting me and whatever else. That wall's coming down. Now that he has exhausted all his vitriol, and I've listened to him, and I've shown him that respect. He feels compelled to reciprocate and allow me to, to present my platform, you know, what I have to say. Mm. Now it's my turn to talk. I could go on the offense and attack him for attacking me, and I would be well within my right to do so. I could say, no, you're the one who's a criminal. You're the one who's hanging black men from trees and bombing black churches and dragging black men behind pickup trucks and so forth and so on. I could attack him because everything I just said is true. All of those things have happened with the Klan, right? So I would be right to say that. But if I attack him like that, the wall will go right back up. I want to keep the wall down so I can plant a seed. When the wall is up, you can't plant a seed. The seed hits the wall and falls back on your side. When the wall is down, you can plant a seed over the wall into his turf. All right? So now the wall is down. Rather than go on the offense, I go on the defense. And, 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 and my defense is an offense in a way. I'm suddenly planting the seed. Instead of, instead of attacking him, I say, you know, I hear what you're saying. However... I don't have a criminal record. Nobody in my family has a criminal record. I've never been on welfare. Nobody in my family has ever been on welfare. As far as brain size goes, I've never measured my brain, but I'm sure it's the same size as anybody else's. And as far as the SATs go, my SAT scores were high enough to get me into college. I have a bachelor's degree. Both my mother and father had, ma had master's degrees my dad was working on his PhD before he passed. So I'm saying all this defending myself, but I'm letting him know that we have education. We don't have, we're not on welfare. We don't have a criminal record, right? I could throw it in his face because I know he barely made it out of high school. Hmm. All right. But if I throw that in his face, knowing that I have more intelligence in my little finger than he and his whole clan put together, that would just call the, cause the wall to go back up. So here's what happens. When the wall is down, he hears. When the wall is up, it's like this. He doesn't, he doesn't hear anything you say. So he's heard me. He goes home, and he, and he reflects upon what transpired that day. Damn, you know, I had a, a conversation with a black guy for three hours, and, you know, and we, we didn't come to blows. That's never happened before. You know, and, and, what, and what that Daryl guy said about 
such and such, it makes sense. But he's black. But what he said was true, but he's black. So he's having a cognitive dissonance. Mm. You know, mm. He knows what I said to be true, either because he researched it and found out that it was true, or he already knew it to be true. But he does not want to accept the fact that the truth came from a black source. That just does not compute right, in his world. Okay? But, but, so he struggles back and forth. So he's left with this dilemma. Do I disregard that guy's skin color and believe the truth because I know it's true and change my direction? Or do I consider his skin color and know he's telling me the truth but go on living a lie? That's his dilemma. Mm. So in most cases, these people will opt for the truth. But there are times, though, and people who will never change. They will go to their grave being hateful, violent, and racist. All right? Um, I, I've, I've met some of those people too. But anybody who even has those feelings, if they're willing to sit down and have a conversation with you, there is an opportunity to plant that seed. But you've got to do it the right way. You can't attack, attack, attack. Right. You, you, you do a subtle attack by defending <clears throat> and then let him reflect on, on, what you've, on what you've done, what you've said in your defense. And then that makes him think. See, he, he hears that. When you're attacking him, he's not hearing it. The wall is up. He's blocking it out. Right. All right.